Alberta Dees was born in Adams Run, South Carolina, in 1936, to a family deeply rooted in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She left her hometown as a young woman to pursue her education. She earned a BA in Business Administration, a Master's of Education, and eventually her doctorate in education. As she learned, she made sure to provide for the education of others, opening the first African-American-owned preschool in Mobile, Alabama, and managing a local radio station there, supporting the Upward Bound program in Terre Haute, Indiana, and designing vocational training for aspiring teachers in Westfield, Massachusetts. Alberta won accolades from the Phi Delta Kappa sorority for her leadership in education. And my parents uh, became interested in the faith in the early 70s and even a little before. And their interest was really prompted by my sister, Alberta Dees, becoming a Baha'i. And when she would come home, she would share about the Baha'i faith. As Alberta came home to visit, she talked a lot about the Baha'i faith. And of course, they wanted to know, what is this that you've gotten yourself into? So they began to um, study the faith. My grandfather was an avid reader, and he would read just volumes, different things, but he read the Bible frequently. And Alberta began to give him Baha'i writings, and he perused them and read them. And he fell in love with the faith. During one visit in the winter of 1969, Alberta made what the Universal House of Justice would later call a signal contribution to the growth of the Baha'i faith. Alberta wrote, it started on Tuesday, December 31st, 1969, when my brother and his wife came to my home to learn more about the faith and how to become Baha'is. On Thursday, we decided to visit some of the people, including my brother and his wife. After talking with them a short while, my brother said he wanted to become a Baha'i. On Friday, we had a home fireside and another brother and a contact from Columbia decided to become Baha'is. We had planned a big fireside for Saturday night. After the closing prayer, as if there were a burst of fire in the room, the young people were asking for cards. This moment can never really be recaptured on paper. Nine people declared their belief in Baha'u'llah. Baha'is were looking everywhere for cards. Finally, three Baha'is drove 35 miles into Charleston Heights to get three cards. In the past few days, we have had a total of 19 declarations in my home. Friends, the people here are waiting for the message of Baha'u'llah and are ready to accept it. Within the next year, more than 10,000 people embraced the Baha'i faith in South Carolina, aided by Alberta's efforts and the determined exertions of many ardent teachers. The music you hear are happy Baha'is attending one of the most exciting teaching conferences ever to be held in America. The place, Frogmore, South Carolina. The date, Nauru's, 1970. The speaker you are about to hear is Alberta Williford, home front pioneer who returned to her hometown of Adams Run, South Carolina, to teach the faith of Baha'u'llah to her people. I have done nothing spectacular because I, if it was left up to me, I'd probably be in someplace else right now. <laughs> really, I would. But I knew it wasn't left up to me. There's nothing I could do but try to do, just be there, to be loved into the faith. This is a faith of love. I've heard this expression time and time again. We love the people into the Baha'i faith. There's no other way. And when you come to teach these people, you don't have to convince them about Zoroaster, about Buddha, 
and it's up to you to let them know that Baha'u'llah has brought this, this message for today. That Baha'u'llah has come to fulfill the promises of Christ. We are depending on you at this conference today, only you. Because you are here because you want to help. You didn't have the mass civil rights movement throughout South Carolina. We commonly say that the civil rights movement sort of passed through South Carolina. It wasn't really in South Carolina. However, on the other hand, those people who became Baha'is, it brought them such renewal and the faith actually empowered them. It empowered them from an inner level, really. That is, with the writings, when Baha'u'llah says, noble have I created you, how could you dispute that? So if you internalize that, then it gives them a sense of confidence to move forward. People who embrace the faith, they went about doing their job of propagating the principles of integration. This large grassroots movement towards the Baha'i faith not only affected South Carolina, it planted the seeds for a reshaping of the Baha'i national community as a whole. Alberta continued her intertwined paths in education and Baha'i teaching work for decades to come. She served on several local spiritual assemblies throughout the United States, traveled to share the Baha'i faith with others throughout the Caribbean, and was appointed the first administrator of the Lewis Gregory Baha'i Institute. There she played an instrumental role in establishing WLGI Radio Baha'i, which still broadcasts uplifting programming in rural South Carolina today. During the 1980s and 1990s, Alberta served on the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of the United States and settled on the Navajo Nation, where she taught at university. In the words of the National Spiritual Assembly, her exceptionally rich and full career of service to humanity and of conscientious and capable efforts to further the advance of the Baha'i faith and its unifying teachings affected a myriad lives for the better earning her a legion of loyal friends and admirers in the many locales across the country in which she lived and worked. Her warm, charming, dignified, and ever edifying presence touched and uplifted a multitude of hearts. Truly, hers was a life of better than eight decades well spent, and she has left to all who knew and loved her a wonderful legacy of good.